The White House has announced the launch of the Civilian Climate Corps, hoping to put about 20,000 young people to work, working on clean energy, conservation, and climate resilience in the first year of operation. Florida has beat out California and Texas for the first time as the state that's installed the most solar panels in 2023, and a new study finds that solar farms are much more efficient and effective than growing corn for energy in the U.S. I'm Jay Warmke with Blue Rock Station, and this is the news from the solar industry for the week of September 24th. Well, the White House has announced the launch of a new program they're calling the Civilian Climate Corps, and they're hoping to put as many as 20,000 young people to work, working in clean energy, conservation, climate resilience. Uh, it's patterned after the Civilian Conservation Corps that was very popular in, during the Depression in the 1930s. Uh, this particular program hopes to address the severe labor shortages that are involved in the um, energy transition to clean energy. Also trying to deal with about a 12 billion dollar backlog of repairs and maintenance to the national park system. Basically, these are paid internships uh, that are very similar to um, AmeriCorps in nature. Uh, for the first half of 2023, Florida has beat out Texas and California, which are number two and number three, uh, as the state where the most solar has been installed. Uh, Florida, in the first six months of this year, had installed 2,499 megawatts of solar, California 1,648, and Texas 1,292. Now, before we do too much celebrating for the state of Texas, there, sorry, for Florida, their, um, their policies really favor utility deployment, and the utilities versus the homeowners have, in, have accounted for about 86% of this installation. And actually, they still have a long way to go to catch up as far as the installed base of solar. Florida currently now has about 12,612 megawatts of installed solar. Texas, 18,801, and California far and away is leading with 41,675 megawatts of solar. There's a big trend in the solar marketplace towards single company or proprietary solutions for the systems. And with this in mind, QCell, which is the world's number one leading seller of solar panels, has announced a new integrated system they're calling Q Home Core. Now this is a DC coupled system. So it not only contains solar panels, which of course has been Q Cell's business, but now they're also having a Q um, Cell manufactured 7.6 kW inverter, as well as Q Save batteries. Now these are five kilowatt hours each, can be stacked four of them up to four in a system. And then the Q-Home Hub, which is their smart transfer switch as well as their load management systems. Now, Q-Cells is a South Korean company, uh, but they've recently opened up the largest solar panel manufacturing facility in the Western Hemisphere. This is gonna be located in Dalton, Georgia, uh, and that's really to take advantage of the incentives in the uh, Inflation Reduction Act for domestically manufactured products. The U.S. Department of Defense has launched a prototype dispatchable microgrid, and they're going to be installing this at Stewart Air National Guard Base in New York. Now, they're partnering with Redflow, which is a storage company, and Amoresco, which is an integrator, and they're hoping to build a 1.2 to 1.4 megawatt hour microgrid. Now, the process or the plan here is that this prototype could be used to uh, dispatch um, self-contained energy systems. Uh, not only in the field during armed conflict, but also at about 450 global bases that the military, the U.S. military operates. Google and Level 10 Energy have announced a partnership where they're designing a new platform that's designed to um, reduce the amount of time in power purchase agreements. Now, currently it takes about 12 months from the time someone decides they want to purchase renewable energy for their company to the time that that power purchase agreement is in place. 
Well, this platform uh, is designed to combine the RFP process with the power purchase agreement process and shorten that time to about two to three months. Now, hopefully this will address some of the backlog in systems. In fact, in the pipeline right now, there's more um, renewable energy waiting to be installed and connected to the grid than there is existing uh, generating capacity in the entire grid from all sources of, of fuel. And a new study shows that solar is better, a better land use than uh, growing corn on existing farmland. Uh, and of course, uh, currently about 30 million acres of land in the United States is used to grow corn for non-human and non-animal consumption. Basically, for grow, uh, growing corn to make ethanol. Now this represents about 45% of the um, corn product in the United States. Now a study by the Department of Energy as, long, as well as the National Wildlife Federation have found that when you incorporate the, um, the f land use, when that's factored in, uh, ethanol is actually about 24% more carbon intensive than using straight gasoline. Uh, electric vehicles currently account for about 5% of all of the automotive sales in the United States, but, um, but JD Power is anticipating that by 2035, it will account for about 70% of all. So we're in this process of moving to an electrified economy, including transportation. Now, solar farms take about one third the land mass as growing corn for the same amount of energy produced. So uh, it not only saves water, but it saves on, on the land and it's also more profitable to the farmer. In fact, according to the industry averages, corn will generate about a $450 per acre profit, not counting the rent of land, which would be about $325 per acre if the farmer did not own that land, compared with um, solar farms, which pay between $1,000 to $2,000 a year uh, with fixed income at about 20 years. And that's the news from the solar industry for this week. We'll see you next week.